have for loop for i equals to 1 to 20 do e of n is equal to n square that is n e to n minus n. So now write these in the in the words that is first one is for all n e of n is greater than or equal to 0. So in words if you want to write this then it indicates that every element of the array that is e of n is nothing but nth element of the array. So for all n means for every index i or n. So e of n is greater than or equal to 0 indicates that array element is non-negative. Next there exist n e of n plus 1 is equal to 2 times e of n. So the second one there exists some n plus 1th element which is equal to 2 times the nth element. So that is the meaning of this. Next is for all n 1 less than or equal to n less than or equal to 90 implies e of n is less than e of n plus 1. That is every element of the array are in ascending order. We know that ascending means first element is uh, less than or equal to second element like that uh, it goes on increasing order. So e of n is less than e of n plus 1 that is nth element is less than n plus 1th element. It is satisfying for all the indexes from 1 to 19. Next for all m for all n m is not equal to n if m is not equal to n implies e of m is not equal to e of n or for all m for all n m is less than n implies e of m is not equal to e of n that means all the entries in the array are distinct now let us see some statements when it is true when it is false so first we'll see there exists x p of x so this is true for some a in the universe if p of a is true so here when it is false so here it is false if for every a in the universe p of a is false for all x p of x is true for every a in the universe if p of a is true and when it is false is for at least one a in the universe if p of a is false then the for all x p of x will be false there exists x negation of p of x and for all x negation of p of x will be just the opposite where here you will have negation of p of a and here again negation of p of a. Again the same thing. Suppose p of x and q of x are open statements which are logically equivalent then the biconditional p of a if and only if q of a is true for each replacement of a form the universe form each replacement of a from the replacement from the universe and is written as for all x p of x logically equivalent to q of x. If p of a then q of a is true for each a in the universe then we write for all x p of x implies q of x. That means you will not have a situation where P of A is true and Q of A is false. Example, for the universe of real numbers, every real number greater than 3 has a magnitude greater than 3. Here, P of X is X greater than 3. Q of X is magnitude is nothing but absolute value of X is greater than 3. So, this can be written in the statement form as for all x, p of x implies q of x and this is true because if x is greater than 3, then the absolute value will definitely be greater than 3 but not the vice versa. Next, converse of the first one is you know what is converse, inverse and contrapositive. So, the converse of this is for all x, q of x implies p of x. This is false because if the magnitude of a real number is greater than 3, then the real number itself is greater than 3 is false if you consider x is equal to minus 5. So, and uh, then q of x, q of minus 5 is true but p of minus 5 is false. That is q of uh, q is nothing but the absolute value is greater than 3 but the original value that is minus 5 is greater than 3 is false. Therefore, the implication is false. Now the contrapositive if you observe you can know that contrapositive is equal to the 
implication therefore this also has to be true and the inverse and the converse are true therefore this will also be false and the sentence form are given here next proof prove that there exist x p of x and q of x implies there exist x p of x and there exist x q of x so here we, this is the hypothesis and this is the conclusion so when this hypothesis is true then there is at least one element c in the universe for which both p of c and q of c that is p of c and q of c is true so now by the rule of conjunctive simplification p of c is true and q of c is also true so now the p of c we have a true statement so now if you quantify there exist x p of x will be true then similarly there exist x q of x is another true statement therefore there exist p of x and there exist q of x is a true statement since there exist x p of x and there exist x q of x is a true statement whenever this is true it follows that there exist x p of x and q of x implies there exist x p of x and there exist x q of x similarly we can prove the remaining quantified implications and equivalence statements now finding the negation of if some statement is given if x is odd then x square minus 1 is even so you have to first write it in symbolic form find the negation and write the answer in words p of x is x is odd q of x is x square minus 1 is even so this statement given statement can be written as for all x p of x implies q of x is a given statement and the negation if you observe you have quantifier which is a universal quantifier when you negate it becomes there exist when this negation comes to the negation of the implication and the implication we know that it is equal to negation of p of x or q of x and uh, outside you have negation so applying the law of uh, double negation you will get p of x first you apply the uh, de morgan's law and you get negation negation p of x and this r becomes and and this negation comes to the q of x and now double negation if you apply you will get p of x and negation of q of x and in the sentence form this is nothing but there exists an integer such that x is odd and x square minus 1 is odd finding the negation of there exist x r of x and s of x so negation of there exist is for all x and this negation comes to the negation of r of x and s of x by applying the de morgan's law this is equivalent to for all x negation of r of x and this and becomes r and this s of x becomes negation of s of x so we'll continue in the next video thank you